Hey do, hello. Today we're in the beautiful city of Stockholm, Sweden. I'm gonna be taking you on an epic three day adventure. We've rented this ultra modern apartment. And as you can see, out here on the terrace, you can even watch the cruise ships as they pass by. What an amazing view. Our first stop, Stockholm City Hall. After that, we'll be visiting the Royal Palace, where we can weave in and out of museums that showcase different artifacts dating all the way back to medieval times. Then we'll head into the Old Town, where we can grab a bite to eat and have a coffee with a Swedish princess. Our fourth stop will be the Dronningholm Palace, where we can see what it's like to live like a royal. And our fifth and final stop will be the Vasa Museum, where we can view a real-life Viking ship that was salvaged in 1961 after being underwater for over 300 years. It's going to be awesome. Let's check it out. Alright, here we are at our first stop, the Stockholm City Hall. Now this is a really amazing site. It was once an old mill that burned down in the late 1800s, but was rebuilt as City Hall in 1911. As you can see behind me, the building is made of brick. Eight million in fact. One million of those bricks are handmade, and they were used on the facade. So let's head inside and see what they have to offer. Stockholm City Hall is one of the most visited tourist attractions in the city and is one of the most famous buildings in all of Sweden. It is famous for its grand ceremonial halls, which are all very different in their look and design. It is also well known for the Nobel Prize ceremony held here on December 10th every year. Visitors are allowed via guided tours, which you can book right in the main entrance. The tour will begin here, in what is known as the Blue Hall. Initially, the architect intended to cover the walls in blue tile, but once he saw how the red brick looked with the daylight shining in, he decided to keep it as such. The name Blue Hall, however, had already been touted in the press, so it was decided that the name would remain. Here we see the council chamber, where important political decisions are made. The beautifully designed ceiling was inspired by the country's Viking history. And now we're in the Golden Hall, by far the most awe-inspiring room. Every square inch of this room is covered in these beautiful gold-colored mosaic tiles. It really is quite a sight to see. The tiles were installed between 1921 and 1923 by the mosaic firm Poole & Wagner out of Berlin, Germany. Now, let's head over to the Royal Palace. So here we are, stop number two, the Royal Palace. Let's head inside and check it out. The palace is broken down into many rooms and museums some of which require an entry fee. Although the armory, which I'm going to show you here, is actually free, and it was by far one of the best rooms in the whole palace. Look at all of these amazing artifacts. Man, check out these suits of armor. These are so cool. Look how much detail has gone into them. They look more like some type of full body jewelry or something. And you can see they have one for the horse as well. These things are so cool. I've never seen anything like it. Look at the way the light shimmers off of the metal. Wow. And here we see some royal attire. That dress is perfect for social distancing. Can you believe here we are in the 21st century and we have to worry about a virus trying to take out mankind? I wonder what life was like back then. Now this museum goes in chronological order. You'll notice each suit of armor gets a little more detailed as we move along. If I were to take you all the way to the end, we'd see some more modern military uniforms. Unfortunately, we have limited time, so I'm just going to stick to this medieval stuff. This is what I find fascinating anyway. Look how his armor matches that of his horses. And this guy, this looks like something out of a fairy tale. Look how detailed that is. Check out that huge spike on the horse's helmet. Moving along, here's a little bit more modern version of plate armor. And here we can see some more civilian clothes. And a box full of treasures. What do we have here? A pipe for smoking, a knife, some buttons, and some pocket change. Hmm. And now we've made our way underground in the basement of the royal palace. This is where they keep all of the royal stagecoaches. Look how beautiful these are. Some of these date back to the 1600s and they're so well preserved. You know, I would have actually missed this room had I not asked to use the restroom. I got so lucky that I did. This was one of my favorite parts of the whole trip. These things are just amazing. 
Now, if you're like me, you've worked up quite a hunger. Let's head into the Old Town and grab a bite to eat. So here we are in the Old Town. This area is quite touristy. There's all sorts of tourist shops and restaurants, but it's a great place to come to view some beautiful Swedish architecture. Let's walk around and have a look. Stockholm's Old Town is one of Europe's largest and best preserved medieval city centers in all of Europe. Founded in the year 1252, this part of the city is rich in history, with its narrow streets, grand buildings, and beautiful architecture. There are also many modern shops and restaurants. If you catch the lunch special, or Dagensrat, which translates to meal of the day, you can find a delicious plate of food for around $10. After lunch is a great time to walk around and do some shopping before enjoying fika, which roughly translates to coffee and cake. Fika is an important Swedish tradition and is meant to be a time to slow down and visit with family and friends. Fika can also be used as a verb. Swedes will often say to each other, let's go in fika, or you and I fika so well together. I recommend the Swedish princess cake. That's the pastel green cake you see here, which is made of layers of sponge cake, jam, pastry cream, and a thick dome layer of whipped cream topped with marzipan. After we finish up with fika, we'll run and grab a ferry and head over to the Dronningholm Palace. So here we are on the grounds of Dronningholm Palace where we get to see what it's like to live like a royal. Let's check it out. The Dronningholm Palace is the private residence of the Swedish royal family. Built in the late 17th century, it served as a regular summer residence of the Swedish royal court for most of the 18th century. The palace is such a great example of 18th century Northern European royal living that in 1991 it was claimed as a World Heritage Site. Parts of the palace are open to the public and it is a very popular tourist attraction. My first impression is just the sheer amount of ornate detail that has gone into this place. It truly feels royal. The hardwood floors creak beneath my feet. All right, let's hurry up and catch the ferry so we can make our way over to the Vasa Museum and check out that shipwreck. All right, guys, we've made our way to the museum. Behind me, what you're looking at here is a real life, fully intact salvaged Viking ship. Let's check it out. Vasa is a Swedish warship built between 1626 and 1628. So technically, it's not a Viking ship, even though it's often referred to as such. The age of the Vikings ended in the 11th century. This magnificent ship was the world's most high-tech warship when it set sail, although it didn't make it very far. The Vasa sank, in full view of a horrified public, after sailing only about 1,300 meters into her maiden voyage on August 10, 1628. There is some debate as to why the ship sank so soon after setting sail. One theory is that the gun deck was far too heavy as it was designed by someone with little experience. Roughly 95% of Vasa's wood was intact when Sweden finally raised the wreck in 1961. The cold, oxygen-poor water of the Baltic Sea protected Vasa from bacteria and worms that usually digest wooden shipwrecks. Now we're looking at the stern, or the rear of the ship. Just look at all this amazing woodwork. Such detail. And remember, this is how it was salvaged. All of this is original, after being underwater for over 300 years. Wow. Now to give you an idea of the size and scale of this ship, take a look at the bottom right hand of your screen. You see those two people? During the 1961 salvage, thousands of artifacts were found and the remains of at least 15 people, all of which were extremely well preserved due to the cold, oxygen-poor water of the Baltic Sea, which protected Vasa from bacteria and worms that usually digest wooden shipwrecks. 
Among the many items found were clothing, weapons, tools, coins, cutlery, and six of the ten sails. Both the ship and the artifacts recovered have provided scholars with invaluable insights into the details of naval warfare, shipbuilding techniques, and everyday life in early 17th century Sweden. Here we see a display of some personal items. I see a comb on the top shelf. And this pair of shoes, wow, the amount of preservation is truly outstanding. It's as if the entire ship and everything on it were frozen in time. Take a look at these coins. Man, I'd love to have just one of these to add to my coin collection at home. And here we get to see some of the ship's rigging. What amazes me is the craftsmanship. Everything today is so prefabricated. At the time, when Vasa was being built, Sweden had still not yet developed a sizable sailcloth industry, so the material had to be imported. Records indicate sailcloth from France was to be used. However, the cloth for the sails of Vasa most likely came from Holland. The rigging was made entirely of hemp, imported from Latvia. The sails were made mostly of hemp and flax. Here's an example of what life would have looked like aboard the Vasa. As you can see, there were many different floors, all of which were bustling with activity. Each section of the ship had its designated purpose. You have the bridge, multiple gun decks, steerage, the galley, a sick bay, and many more. Needless to say, this was no pleasure cruise. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.